Welcome to Certification Terminal, your ultimate destination for all certifications. We are thrilled to have you here. Today, we're diving into another video of ISC Square's Cutting Edge Cybersecurity Certification Practice Exam Series. At Certification Terminal, we're committed to being your ultimate certification Q&A hub. We're here to support you on every step of your certification journey. If you find value in our content, don't forget to show your support. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this video with anyone who could benefit from it. Now, let's get started on your path to becoming a certified cybersecurity pro. Question number one. What geographical area does the General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, cover? Option A, applies only to data controllers located within the EU. Option B, applies only to data controllers and processors located within the European Union, EU. Option C, applies to data controllers and processors located inside slash outside the EU if they offer goods or services to data subjects within the EU. Option D, applies only to data processors located within the European Union, EU. The correct answer is. Option C, applies to data controllers and processors located inside or outside the EU if they offer goods or services to data subjects within the European Union. The GDPR applies to data controllers and processors located inside or outside the European Union if they offer goods or services to data subjects within the European Union. This means that organizations that process the personal data of European Union citizens, regardless of their location, must comply with the provisions of the General Data Protection Regulation. Question number two. Within a disaster recovery plan, which component primarily addresses the determination of the maximum acceptable data loss in the event of a system failure or disaster? Option A, Recovery Time Objective, RTO. Option B, Business Impact Analysis, BIA. Option C, Recovery Point Objective, RPO. Option D, Incident Response Plan, IRP. The correct answer is. Option C, Recovery Point Objective, RPO. In the context of a disaster recovery, DR, plan, the component that primarily focuses on defining the maximum tolerable data loss is the Recovery Point Objective, RPO. RPO is the targeted time frame within which data loss is deemed acceptable in the event of a system failure or disaster. It specifies the point in time to which systems and data must be restored, ensuring that the organization can resume operations with an acceptable level of data loss. Option A, recovery time objective is incorrect. Recovery time objective defines the targeted time frame within which systems and services must be restored after a disruption. It focuses on the time required to recover functionality, rather than the maximum tolerable data loss. Option B, business impact analysis is incorrect. Business impact analysis assesses the potential impacts of disruptions on various business processes and helps prioritize recovery efforts. It does not specifically address the maximum tolerable data loss. Option D, incident response plan is incorrect. An incident response plan outlines the procedures and actions to be taken in response to a security incident. While important, it is not directly related to defining the maximum tolerable data loss in the event of a system failure or disaster. Question number three. What is the objective of a security assessment? Option A, to identify, analyze, and evaluate security risks and vulnerabilities. Option B, to implement security controls. Option C, to train employees on security awareness. Option D, to monitor security controls. The correct answer is. Option A, to identify, analyze, and evaluate security risks and vulnerabilities. The purpose of a security assessment is to identify, analyze, and evaluate security risks and vulnerabilities within an organization's information systems and assets. This process helps an organization to determine its current security posture 
and identify areas where improvements can be made to reduce the risk of potential threats. Question number 4. Which tool is frequently employed for password cracking? Option A, John the Ripper. Option B, NS Lookup. Option C, Wireshark. Option D, Burp Suite. The correct answer is Option A, John the Ripper. John the Ripper is a famous open source password security auditing and password recovery tool. Burp Suite is a well known set of tools for vulnerability scanning, penetration testing, and web app security, not for cracking passwords. The remaining options are both network analysis tools. Wireshark is the most used network protocol analyzer in the world. NSLOOKUP is a network administration command line tool for querying the domain name system to obtain the mapping between the domain name, IP address, or other DNS records. Question number 5. What is the aim of conducting a full-scale exercise in disaster recovery planning? Option A, train employees on their roles and responsibilities in the event of a disaster. Option B, test the effectiveness of a disaster recovery plan. Option C, identify weaknesses and areas for improvement in a disaster recovery plan. Option D, all of the above. The correct answer is. Option D, all of the above. A full-scale exercise in disaster recovery planning is a simulation of a disaster that is designed to test the effectiveness of a disaster recovery plan, train employees on their roles and responsibilities in the event of a disaster, and identify weaknesses and areas for improvement in the plan. Question number 6. What does likelihood of occurrence refer to in the realm of cybersecurity? Option A, the level of difficulty for an attacker to exploit a vulnerability in a system or network. Option B, the measure of the amount of time that a system or network is vulnerable to attack. Option C, the number of vulnerabilities present in a system or network that could be exploited by a threat. Option D, the probability that a given threat or set of threats will successfully exploit a vulnerability in a system or network based on a subjective analysis of the threat and attacker capability. The correct answer is Option D, the probability that a given threat or set of threats will successfully exploit a vulnerability in a system or network, based on a subjective analysis of the threat and attacker capability. Likelihood of occurrence helps to calculate the severity of a vulnerability. It is the probability of the threat occurring. Question number 7. Vanessa has received an email with an attached contract and wishes to confirm its authenticity from her business partner, John, while ensuring it hasn't been altered during transmission. Which technology can offer this assurance? Option A. Data compression. Option B. Symmetric encryption. Option C. Firewall. Option D. Digital signature. The correct answer is Option D, Digital Signature A digital signature, Option C, would be used in this scenario to provide the required assurance. Digital signatures are cryptographic tools that are used to verify the identity of the sender, in this case, John, and ensure the integrity of the transmitted data, the contract. If John had applied a digital signature to the contract before sending it, Vanessa could verify the signature to confirm that the contract was indeed from John and hadn't been altered in transit. Option A, data compression, is a method of reducing the size of data files for storage or transmission purposes, not for verifying identity or data integrity. Option B, symmetric encryption, is a type of encryption where the same key is used for encryption and decryption. While it provides confidentiality, it does not inherently provide authentication or integrity checks. Option C, a firewall, is a network security device that monitors and filters incoming and outgoing network traffic based on an organization's previously established security policies, not for verifying the identity of a sender or the integrity of transmitted data. Question number 8. What role does risk identification serve in the risk management process? Option A, 
to assign risk priorities to identified risks. Option B, to determine the acceptable level of risk tolerance. Option C, to assess the potential impact of risks on the organization. Option D, to identify and document potential risks to organizational assets. The correct answer is Option D, to identify and document potential risks to organizational assets. To identify and document potential risks to organizational assets. Risk identification involves the systematic process of identifying and documenting potential risks that could impact the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of organizational assets. Question number 9. What is the objective of crime prevention through environmental design, CPTED? Option A, to decrease crime through physical design and management of the built environment. Option B, to increase crime through physical design and management of the built environment. Option C, to have no impact on crime through physical design and management of the built environment. Option D, to increase crime through law enforcement practices. The correct answer is Option A, to decrease crime through physical design and management of the built environment. Crime prevention through environmental design, CPTED, is an evidence-based crime prevention strategy that aims to reduce crime through design and management of the built environment. It uses physical design and management practices to increase natural surveillance, reduce opportunities for crime, and create a sense of community ownership and pride in the built environment. Question number 10. What is the meaning of zero day in incident terminology? Option A, days without a cybersecurity incident. Option B, days to solve a previously unknown system vulnerability. Option C, a previously unknown system vulnerability. Option D, days with a cybersecurity incident. The correct answer is Option C, a previously unknown system vulnerability. A zero day is an unknown system vulnerability that can be exploited since it does not yet exist in any vulnerability database. Moreover, these vulnerabilities do not generally fit recognized patterns, signatures or methods, making them very hard to detect and prevent. Please hit the like button. Thank you for joining us today at Certification Terminal. We hope you found this video helpful on your journey towards becoming a certified cybersecurity expert. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future videos, please let us know in the comments below. Your feedback is invaluable to us. Remember to hit that like button if you found this video informative, and don't forget to subscribe for more insightful content on certification exam preparations. Share this video with your colleagues and friends who might benefit from it. Together, we can build a strong community of certified professionals. Stay tuned for more updates, and until next time, keep learning and excelling in your certification endeavors. See you in the next video.